Welcome to this video about WebSpeed website page editor from Sand Dollar Digital Design Incorporated. In this video, I want to talk briefly about the some of the basic features of the website template called Section Header Text Bold. This is one of the very beginning uh, sections that we use in building websites, and this is just a space with a that you can type whatever text you want to. Now, what you type in here is just going to appear on the website, and we're going to talk some more about the options down the left side here. But let me remind you, there's a link right up here in the uh, top right corner that will take you directly to this particular page. And when you click on it, it should it is designed to open up either in a new tab or a new window. This is going to completely depend on some settings within your computer, but when you look at the contents of that page, and you can see here the content is this little section right in here where it says Tigger Travels, text and photo concerning our organization. And right now there's actually nothing in here. All the rest of the stuff here you see on this particular site is just design. And we're going to look at the content and managing this content and creating just a box with some text in it. This is the very basic uh, thing that we can do. It's the, really the beginning of looking at how these things work. And first thing I'm going to do is we're going to just type some text in here that we can use as an example on our sample page of the website. Now, when you're typing on your website, of course, this is just like creating a brochure for your website. You want to be sure to use correct spelling and proper grammar. A uh, nice thing about most browsers is they do have a spell checker built in. You can see here the little squiggly red line under the misspelled word example is letting me know. You really should take a moment when you type in stuff uh, to um, make sure that it's looks correct. One thing that we frequently recommend, if it's a sizable amount of text, more than a simple sentence or two, uh, we tell people to go type it into maybe a Word document or a uh, some kind of text document where you can kind of get the wording out and uh, Word, Microsoft Word or other word processors will even check your grammar for you, which is a very useful tool. So we're sitting here looking at this. We've typed some text in this box, and if we just go down here to the bottom and hit Save This Now, it will take a moment to save, and we go over to the website. Now, remember, it doesn't show up right here right away. Whenever you look at a web page, you're actually not looking at the server. You're looking at a copy of the web page that the server gave your computer. So we have to tell your computer to refresh or reload the page, and it's telling it to go back to the server, get another copy of this page, because I've done some updating and it's going to be different. And sure enough, there's our new, whoops, <laughs> there's our new little section that says that we can use as an example on our sample page of the website. So very simply, we want to start learning how to use this multi-tab browsing up here at the top, where we can flip from web speed over to the website and be able to check our progress as we go along. Now, once a section is added in here, we can see it here in the list of sections. And we have over here to the left is an edit link, and we can go edit this section if we want to make modifications to it. Now, there's several settings over here that we can deal with. Uh, first of all, we have this border color. Now, the colors that are here should be the ones that match your color palette that is used throughout your site. And for the sake of continuity, that's a good thing to stick to, but occasionally we all know that you might want to use a different color, which you see this question mark right here. If you click on that, you can actually pick a whole bunch of colors in here. I think it's, a uh, is it 60? No, it's more than 64 colors. I forget how many, but it's a lot of colors that you can use uh, as custom colors. Uh, now, this border color, this is going to be a line that appears along the outside, and right now you can see there is no special border out here. So we're going to make it this color red just so that it'll stand out, and I'm going to make it a nice fine one, that's a one pixel border, and I can go down and I can say save changes now. And when I pop back over here to the website, now remember I have to hit refresh, be able to see the changes, you'll now see a very fine little 
single pixel red line that goes around that box. Now I can make that red line as wide as I want to. This next setting down here, uh, these are actually pixels. This, the picture on your screen is made up of very small dots, uh, generally anywhere between uh, one to 2,000 dots up and down and across the screen, depending on what kind of screen you have. But if I wanted to make a much wider border to really make this section stand out, I could make it a 15 pixel extra wide uh, border. And when I hit Save Changes Now, I can then flip over here. Oh, in fact, you can see it right here. There's a nice wide line around that if you wanted to really bring attention to something. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're designing a website, don't let things get too busy and too complex. It's so easy to put boxes and colors and spaces and all kinds of things, but does it really make it easier to read the content of the page? And that's something that you really need to keep in mind as you're doing this. The next section down here is the actual text color. Occasionally, you may want to make a different color. I'm sorry, that's not text. That is the cell color. That's the color of the white here in this box. Right now it's white. Maybe I want to make that red border on the outside with a darker red inside. And of course, down here we can change the, the uh, text color to a lighter color. Now, one thing to keep in mind, whenever you're choosing these colors, you always want to pick a color of the text that is going to be in a good contrast to the color of the background. So when I look here at this, you can see there's yellow text on top of a dark red. That's actually pretty readable. If you start putting text that is too close to the color of the background of that box, what you're going to find is search engines will uh, deduct, uh, and we, we're not supposed to say page rank anymore. I don't know what they call it anymore, but they, they, they don't like that. Let's just put it that way. And they have a tendency to, to frown on that, and frowning upon means going lower on the search results lists. So you always want to maintain a good contrast between the text and, what the, and the background that the text is sitting on. So it's okay to put light colored text on a dark background, or vice versa, but if we put, say, orange text on a, let's choose this uh, pink cell color, and if your eyes are sensitive, you may want to close them because this will make your eyes bleed. And you'll see now that is really hard to read. In the video, I don't even know if you can see it in real life right now, I'm having a hard time seeing it. Well, that is a very, very bad design choice. And you really want to stay away from that kind of a layout. The best thing to do is always keep the text dark and the background light or vice versa. The, text light and the background dark. So I'm going to go ahead and make that cell color. Let's make it the yellow. And we're going to make our text this uh, nice deep red. And that's an acceptable contrast. You'll see the, the yellow and the red there. That's enough contrast for the two. We can also go down here and say we want to make that text bold. Maybe we want to make it a center align. In other words, in this box, we want it to be in the middle of the box. So we're gonna, we've made it bold, and we've made the text center align. These are all very normal settings that we use uh, in any uh, place that we might type text, an email or a word processor program like Word. Now, I said it's centered, but you'll notice the box is only so big, and the text fits right in it. You really can't tell that it's centered. Well, the reason is because we really haven't specified a a width for this box, and when we don't specify a width for this box or this section, it'll automatically shrink it down to whatever the contents are. We can make that box a bit larger, though, by going down here at this very end of the section of the settings over here. You'll see it says select section width. Let's say we want to make it 90% uh, of the width. That's 90% of the width from this black line to this black line, and we want it to sit in the center. Now, we're going to have a whole video on this uh, select section alignment at another time, but for now, you'll pretty much just want to set things to center align. But we're going to make that box wider. Now, you'll notice when I save changes, the box, yes, is wider, but 
that text truly is centered inside that box. Some of the other things we can do with this box, we can uh, select the white space between the edge of the box and the text. In other words, that is very microscopically the space between, say, that letter T and the edge of that red line. Right now it's just set to a few pixels, a few dots on the screen. But if we change this to, say, 12 pixels, you'll notice that suddenly this box, which we're, whether we're trying to bring attention to it or not, but this box has a lot more space in it. And the important thing here is you'll notice that it is standing out a little bit more than it was just because it's creating some space with the text inside it. Sometimes you can use this for making special announcements or heading for a, a section. But remember what I said earlier about making this too colorful and boxy and everything else. You've got to be careful about making uh, these types of decisions and keeping things as simple as possible and as easy to read as possible. For those of you who might have a background in laying out brochures at any level, you know what I'm talking about. Even a professional letter, sending out a letter to, to someone, you have to keep certain things in mind and keep the letter easy to read. Now another thing here is that is useful is this bullet list. Now. This bullet list will create a bullet list of everything in this box. So if I go in here and I say, okay, this is what we want to use, da, 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 and then I want a bullet list here. This is the first item, and I hit enter. This is the second item, hit enter. This is the third item. And now I'm gonna go over here and say, make this a bullet list. I'm going to save changes now, and you'll notice I'm flipping back and forth between these tabs. I can see here in web speed there is a sample, and you can see here on the site itself there is the text we entered in. Now the thing is, each line of text is treated as a different bullet item. So if you don't want that first item to be a bullet item, think about making that a different section, making that into its own little header for this particular section. And we're going to talk about some of these other settings, the uh, what that might mean, the do not add HTML. Um, also, we'll talk about background transparency and rounded corners in another video. But for right now, these are truly the basic things that we need to know just to get some information out there. Uh, here, let's make this uh, border that's actually transparent, that little red box with a slash that's transparent. And it doesn't actually matter what, how wide I make it. It'll just add some blank space around that section. But truly, this is just the very basics of how to get some text on your website. And you can adjust the spacing between the, the distance, uh, the width of that border, the spacing between the edge of the box and the edge of the text. And you can see here, there's the edge of the box. It's yellow. And there's the edge of the text. You can line it left and right. You can make it bold. And, oh, there is one more thing. I do. Did, I knew there was something I was missing here. The final thing is we can also control how big we want this text. Right now, and for most cases, we're going to use a standard size text. Now, sometimes we get requests well, uh, from people that say, well, I want it to all be 12-point text like we have in Word and Excel. And the challenge with that is, if we force all the text into a 12-point font, the problem is we start falling out of American Disabilities Act compliance. We use very standard measures of text so that if someone is hard of seeing, when they're looking at the site, they can actually zoom in and see larger text. And this is what someone who may not be able to see as well would look at. If we're forcing that text to be a certain size, it's always going to be the same size, and we're kind of robbing some of our clients of the ability to see your site. So for this reason, we st stick with, it, it's called a relative text size. We have the standard, which is the medium, and then we have a smaller text, a larger text, and an extra large text. 
Uh, there are, uh, there's one other size, an extra small, and frankly, it is just too small for anyone to read. But the, uh, the medium is the normal. If you want to make it extra large text, let's just do this. Make it extra large, save changes, and you'll see as soon as it pops back out here, there it is with nice big text. That would be a good announcement of some kind. Okay, well, join us for another video when we can talk about more of the advanced settings in this uh, type of section. And it's actually some of the settings that we use all throughout different sections. For now, that's the uh, section header text bold.